And what happened, if you watched the election, I was called by the biggest people uh, saying, congratulations, political people. Congratulations, sir. You just won the election. It was 10 o'clock and you looked at the numbers and I'm sure you felt that way. This election was over and then they did dumps. They call them dumps, big, massive dumps uh, in Michigan and Pennsylvania and uh, uh, all over. This is total fraud. And how the FBI and Department of Justice, I don't know, maybe they're involved, but how people are allowed to get away from this stuff with this stuff is unbelievable. This election was rigged. This election was a total fraud, and it continues to be as they hide. And the problem we have, we go to judges and uh, people don't want to get involved. You know, the poll watchers, as, and this is true with all of the states just about that you're talking about, I think all of them, they weren't allowed to have poll watchers. The Democrats and thugs, thugs, now, I'm not talking about saying, could you please move over? They threw them out of the counting rooms. They weren't allowed to be in. They threw them outside in many cases. I think most of them think it was a fraud. I watched you with there's, Kelly. There's look at, of, look at yeah. the election. Look at the election you have coming up right now. You're using the same garbage machinery, Dominion. And she's going around Abrams. She's going around screaming that she's got 800 or 850,000 ballots. What kind of an election right. is this? She's going around collecting votes. What kind of an election is this? What kind of a country are we living in now where you can vote for months ahead of schedule? They say you don't have standing. I said I'd like to file to the lawyers. I would like to file one nice, big, beautiful lawsuit talking about this and many other things with tremendous proof. And they use COVID as a means to stuff the ballot boxes. Joe Biden did not get 16 million more votes than Barack Hussein Obama. He didn't get it. Joe Biden did not get 14 million more votes than Hillary Clinton. And by the way, he didn't beat Obama in the black uh, communities. You go to some of these communities where Obama is very, very popular and he beats them in some of these communities. But all throughout the rest of the United States in a black community, he does he does actually poorly. He doesn't do very well. But he beats Obama well, in swing states. Now, think of that. He beat Obama in swing states. You know that didn't happen. They stuffed the ballot box. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that. This is, this is some of the, uh, you know, impossible statistics that we have found. And this is from the Federalist article. Uh, they call it Biden magic. And they list uh, a, a number of, of, of ways that Joe Biden magically outperformed election norms. You know, it is so weird to me that people couldn't find it in themselves to reelect Donald Trump, what with his steady hand and sound mind. This is Trump's first interview since he lost the election. And clearly, he doesn't seem to be taking his loss too well, opting instead to surface an endless barrage of lies and conspiracy theories on national television. Now, he brings up the idea of massive dumps. This election was over and then they did dumps. They call them dumps, big, massive dumps. And look, in Trump's defense, he's always been clear about his issues with low flow toilets and having to flush 10 to 15 to, what? Oh, oh, he's not talking about those dumps. So Trump's beef with quote, vote dumps was this conspiratorial notion that Democrats were just adding massive amounts of fake votes under the cloak of darkness to push themselves over the edge. In reality, if large numbers of votes were reported, they were nothing more than tallies from populous jurisdictions like big cities reporting their results. Of course, the number of votes are gonna be high because there are a lot of people living in those places, meaning a lot of votes are being counted. If Trump has a problem with these numbers coming in, then he has a problem problem with the very concept of election results. Consider too that even if something nefarious was going on, and bear in mind, there is zero evidence to support that, but even if there was, consider the fact that every audit and recount only validated the original results, and those were done by hand using paper ballots. From Georgia to Wisconsin to Pennsylvania, the audits confirmed what we knew from the initial results, which is that there was no fraud and the counts were correct. Trump then goes on to lambast the FBI and DOJ for not getting involved, even going so far as to claim that they themselves are involved in the supposed fraudulent scandal being propped up. I mean, think about that. This is the president of the United States who lost the election by over 6 million votes, who is so desperate to find a scapegoat to diffuse responsibility off of himself that he's literally blaming his government and the directors that he appointed for supposedly being involved in a conspiracy to make him lose an election. 
The FBI is led by Christopher Wray, who Trump appointed. The DOJ is led by Bill Barr, who Trump appointed. And yet Trump is suggesting that those people wanted him to lose the election. Yeah, no, it makes total sense. Trump even claims with a straight face that poll watchers were thrown out of counting rooms, which is unequivocally false. The Trump campaign even brought the issue to court, where a US district judge, Paul Diamond, an appointee of Republican President George W. Bush, asked the Trump campaign lawyer during the hearing if poll watchers were indeed allowed in the rooms where election workers were processing mail-in ballots in Philadelphia. The lawyer replied, there is a non-zero number of people in the room, meaning that despite Trump's complaints, there were Republican officials observing the counting of ballots. That judge eventually threw out the case, and even the Pennsylvania Supreme Court ruled that distancing regulations at polling sites were reasonable, in that they allowed poll monitors to see what was happening per state law. There was even another poll watcher case in Michigan, seeking to halt the state's vote certification process. But once again, the plaintiffs offered no evidence to support their accusations, and that case was dismissed as well. Meaning that the Trump campaign was happy to say one thing in public, but when it came time to actually back up their claims, they never actually had one scintilla of proof. Trump then goes on to claim that Stacey Abrams in Georgia is collecting 800 or 850,000 ballots, pretending that Abrams having registered 800,000 Democrats in Georgia, which is what she did, means that she has 800,000 ballots socked away in her living room. It is the epitome of a bad faith take. Consider too that if this was actually the case, if Stacey Abrams personally collected 800,000 ballots, don't you think someone would have thought to bring this to court? Maybe just one person? But the fact that they didn't is a testament to the fact that Trump's complaints here don't actually have any basis in reality. They are pure fiction. And the fact that Maria Bartiromo lets him spew these lies unchallenged goes to show just how much of a hack she is too. And finally, last but not least, Trump pretends that he'd like to file, quote, one nice big beautiful lawsuit with tremendous proof. Mind you, this comes after Trump's campaign and his allies have already filed about 40 lawsuits, only one of which they actually won. And in none of those 40 did they present even a modicum of proof of fraud. So when Trump says he'd like to file a big beautiful lawsuit with tremendous proof, that would be quite the improvement over having quite literally zero proof. And look, I think you get the objective by now, which is Donald Trump is content to spew lies with zero evidence whatsoever. Because the point was never actually winning in a court of law, it was always winning in the court of public opinion. And he thinks that if he can repeat his claims over and over and over again, that eventually he can convince enough people that what he's saying is true. But embarking on a wide-scale disinformation campaign isn't going to will his alternate reality into existence. It's only going to make him look like an even worse loser than he already is. And it'll make Maria Bartiromo look like a doormat for him as well. So if they want to traffic in disinformation, that's on them. But the optics aren't helping either one of them. And they're certainly not going to change the results of this election. If you like this video, please check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, where I take a deep dive into the week's most important stories and interview major players in politics, including Kamala Harris, Katie Porter, Adam Schiff, Nancy Pelosi, Eric Swalwell, Mary Trump, Al Franken, Cory Booker, and many, many more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts.